Hello there, this is the second part of the belt system. Uh, building it with the geometry nodes. And we have here the uh, height of the wheels and the thickness of the belt as parameters. And uh, when we want to continue here, we see that we set a smoothing group, but it's better to plug in the top. And now uh, the belt is smooth as well. We can also do the same thing for the wheels. So if we put a set smooth, then we can plug in for the cylinder in between. And then uh, say it's smooth. No, maybe for this one we can better put the side. Maybe selection. No, use the side. This way the side is smoothed. So next what we want to do is to build the uh, elements that can go around. So for that we need to have the curve. So mesh to curve. And here we need to re resample re -sample the curve and then use a length. Because we want to use this to project elements onto it. So if we plug that in and then also plug it into the join, then we will see if we use a cube and plug it in. There we have a lot of cubes. Let's put it 0.5 and we have a little bit less cubes. You can also put it to Point one, make them a little bit smaller and then maybe a little bit wider and higher. So here we have the elements projected onto the belt. Uh, to place them correctly, we need a curve parameter. So if we give a little bit more space and we say curve, uh, no, I mean a sample curve, sample curve there it is we need it over here and then we can put in the curve we want to use the factor because we want to know from the beginning to the end of the curve uh, have a value from 0 to 1 and then we want to have a rotate instances and we want a set position or setting the position of the um, elements. This way now they all disappear. But by the factor, you see that they all go from the beginning to the end of the curve. And for the rotation, we want to have an align Euler to vector twice. And then plug the normal into the factor and the tangent into the factor and then connect the rotation into the rotation. And also here. So it will also know the rotation of the curve. As you can see here, let's turn off this base orientation. There we go. But now it's a lot of elements projected into one spot. So we need some math nodes, an add, and two divide nodes. And we want to divide by the time. Plug it into seconds. And we also want a domain size. And for the domain size, let's make a little bit more space. We want to use the curve. So we plug in the curve and then use the point count and the index. We're going to divide the index by the point count and then use that value, these values add them up and let's put this to 50 uh, these two are added up and we have to fraction it 
and by the fraction it will divide all the elements over the belt and then if we use animation and we have here our timeline set the timeline we see that the elements move over the belt and with this if we set it to 20 it will go a lot faster if we set it to 50 it goes a bit slower and we can also use these to set as a parameter so we can set the speed and also for this one we need a compare node we set the index less than and then the point count and we plug that into the selection. This makes sure that there are uh, not more elements than there are points. So this way you can project elements. And with the cube, what we can do is set a transform. And then maybe transform a bit to the outside. Uh, and maybe we want to make them a bit like this. Maybe set minus 0.2. And we can also give them a bit more elements and make them a little bit smaller. Uh, shorter. Like this. So this way we can project elements onto our um, belt. Maybe we can make them even more smaller. And also there is still a little problem because if we go into our mesh, what we can do if we grab, like you see that the elements update but when I do this, grab them, point them up, the whole thing breaks down. And that's because the convex hull that we made in the previous uh, tutorial needs to be, it, it doesn't need to go at an angle. So it works best when it's flat for this example. So what we need to do is when we get the, the mesh that we start with, so the four points we want to do a transform and then we want to set the z scale to zero and then it doesn't matter where your point is it will always uh, make the belt because it will project the point down and then actually also we need that to do that for the wheels and then it also puts the wheels in the right position. So let's clean this up a little bit. Um, for now, I set the point back to Z0. And now with this system, we can also subdivide. So if we go to Edge, Subdivide, we can add more wheels. And have this whole belt work this way. So also let's try to add some more variation in the wheels because now all the wheels are the same size but when we want to make more uh, variable sizes then we have to copy this instances and then we do um, join geometry we will join both of these and if we plug this in <coughs> If we now scale up the wheels, you see that all of them scale up. So what we can do, we can set uh, the index and then a compare node. Let's drag it into the box. And if we then set index in by integer, well, connect it again and then plug it in. And you see if it's greater than a certain number, it will uh, add the wheel there. So what we then do is 
use this value and use boolean math and reverse the number so we uh, take away the wheels the small wheels where we want to have a big wheel and this is a bit hard to see but if we plug this one in as well then we see that there are two big wheels and the small wheels and this line um, was the wheels that we create that we need later you see that this way if we up this number there will be more small and big wheels you can also pick an exact uh, index if we say for example equal <clears throat> then it will only do one wheel so the index with zero is there index one is there and this way we can choose exactly which wheel we want to make bigger but let's say we do now greater than we have two one two wheels three wheels that will be bigger and then we can uh, copy this over command c and v so we really duplicate it and we don't need this one we plug in our uh, thicker wheels maybe remove the reroute node and then give ourselves some space and then we plug this one into selection Put it inside the same frame and now connect the whole thing also with a join geometry and then we will also set the oh so need to plug this one in and there we have our wheels we can also use the same wheel depth to project uh, also the depths of the wheel. And here we also set a set smooth. Uh, it's this one by the side. And now they are also smooth on the side. So this way we can uh, also plug it into a new parameter and we say uh, wheel index you can of course change this however you want but if we plug these two into the wheel index like the uh, uh, shape of the belt is linked to the wheels that we create here and this way you can see that you can change the wheels and also maybe set the radius of the big wheel and the radius of the small wheel so we have two radii we have to it's strange always that they don't show up here maybe if we save um, well we can do this remove from frame I don't know how they show up so I just plug them in here and then use the radius for the big one radius for the small one and then if we change the radii you can also see that we have control within the parameters panel so this way we can also create our own wheels so for example if we made a collection with wheels and we make a cylinder we can also add this one in here and then instead of using the cylinders we can use our own model as you can see here if we take our mesh and we scale it you see that it scales with it and you can also still change the shape 
There needs to be a transform in between. And if we use this transform and do uh, the bigger radius into scale, then you see we also have control. It actually should be this one. Oops. Into the scale. Then it uses this mesh that we created that can be anything. So for example, if we take the faces and we do an uh, inset and we extrude them and scale them, you see that we can make custom wheels for our belt. We can also do the same for our elements that we project onto it. So this way you can create your own whole belt system. So this was uh, part two and in part three we're going to see how we can use the UV map of the belt to make an animation also.